Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with the blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the DeWitt Academia Endless Drive. It's a very interesting watch. DeWitt is a boutique Geneva-based watchmaker that makes some of the more um, distinctive timepieces out there. Uh, its namesake, Jerome DeWitt, um, is popular among watch aficionados because he's a descendant of Napoleon and he's also a count. He's also a very nice guy. Um, soft-spoken and a lover of machines. And if you go to the DeWitt manufacturer in Geneva, you will see his antique machine collection and tool collection, which is pretty cool. And they do a very nice job displaying that for the guests they get to go. So the Academia Endless Drive is something that is brand new from the company in terms of the design and what it does. It's not a perfect watch, but it's cool and it's worth talking about. It begins with the Academia concept, which is a case family. Uh, of which there have been many. And one of the things which is distinctive about Academia watches and other DeWitt watches is this design motif which uh, resembles crenellation architecturally. Sometimes we've seen it on the bezel. Here we have it on the side of the case. This particular case is in rose gold mixed with black rubber uh, to create that look. And you have it around the periphery of the case, which looks pretty interesting. The case is, I believe, 42 and a half millimeters wide. And what's interesting about it is the base of the watch is actually wider than the bezel. That's not particularly common. and actually means it wears comfortably. Um, other watches I can think of that have designs like that are things like the Louis Vuitton Tambour case. And I'll put it on my wrist in a minute and you'll see what it looks like. But it makes it kind of interesting because you'd normally think of it the other way around where the base is narrower than the bezel. Here you can see the movement. Uh, which is very attractive. It's completely made and designed in-house by DeWitt. This is a uh, sort of base automatic caliber. It's a three hertz with 59 hours of power reserve. And they put over the, a module for the endless drive system. So what is the endless drive system? So you can see that there is this relatively long screw which vertically runs down the center of the case. And, and that screw um, called endless drive can endlessly turn. It's not going to move itself or screw into something. It just sort of endlessly turns. Um, I'm not fully aware of exactly how that works. Um, it's a concept that exists in other machines. And I think that DeWitt just wanted to explore it in a watch. This screw also powers the power reserve indicator, which is at the top there. You can see a small section in green and red. And as you wind the watch, that red section will deplete and green will take over. And as the power reserve runs down, of course, red will push down. That's kind of neat. Unfortunately, because there's no seconds hand or, or anything that allows you to see constant movement on the, on the dial, you have all these great mechanics that are very nicely finished. And you have this nice three-dimensional effect where you can sort of see into the movement there at the opening in the center, but there's nothing to keep you constantly engaged. And that's kind of nice. You know, you think of a tourbillon, for example, which offers you know, motion that you can view all the time. If you want motion you can view all the time, you can turn the watch over to see the movement. And again, DeWitt does a really nice job in terms of finishing. My primary concern in a watch like this is legibility. Um, the, the, the time is indicated via these two discs. And you can see here that there's these little arrows at the top of the disc. I have to hold the watch in the right light so that you can observe the arrows. And right underneath the arrows is where you would read the time. The problem is that the arrows are small. The discs are not too small, but the text is very small. So you have to have quite good eyes to take a look at it. I did suggest to DeWitt um, a potential, I'll call it fix for that issue. And that would be to go ahead and possibly put magnifiers over some or all of the discs. So if you can imagine, for example, there it is on the wrist. It wears very comfortably, actually, and the size is, is quite good. Um, if you have small wrists, you might want to get a shorter strap. But from a wearability standpoint, very, very comfortable. They did a great job with that. Anyways, going back to legibility, imagine a magnifier over the just the, the viewability area here, right underneath that arrow. That would make it a lot easier to see. It would be cool. There's not that many watches out there with dual magnifiers. There have been some in the past, but not that many. Uh, Do it didn't really like that idea. Um, they said they thought it would affect the aesthetics, and maybe they're right, but legibility is something which is important in timepieces, so I hope they consider something like that for a future model. 
The design of the dial, probably not particularly coincidentally, has a face style to it. These discs, especially with the black centers, do in a way resemble eyes and maybe you can find a mouth or a nose in there. And I'm very friendly to watches that have what I call a face look on them, where they look like something which is looking back on you. Um, I've worn several watches like that over the years and I tend to find myself really enjoying watches, like I said, that have something that looks like a face or looks like it's looking back at me. Sometimes I say robot face, sometimes I just say smiley face. This one is just kind of a face and so having those those two discs there like eyes on there, I think that's actually a selling point. I think there's be people who are into watches in this category and see the face on there. Um, and this reminds me a little bit of, I think it's the Kairos by Christophe Claret. Um, Maybe that's one, I forget the name of it, but that also looks, has eyes like this from a chronograph that reminds me of like owl eyes. But here without any hands or anything like that, you have a much cleaner execution of that. So I think this is interesting. Legibility issues aside, overall nice timepiece, very distinctive. Price for the DeWitt Academia Endless Drive is $46,500. You can see the full review on the blog to watch. Thanks.